in one minute. Hello everyone and welcome to the AANMC webinar, Building an ND Practice, Success with Nature Care. We're pleased to have you with us. Before we begin, please make sure that your control panel is expanded. There should be a box like the one shown in the upper right hand corner of your screen. If we do not see this box, please look for a double arrow. Click these arrows and your box will expand. Second, make sure that you can see my desktop, which currently shows a control panel image. This is the window you will use to view today's presentation. During the webinar, there will be opportunities to ask questions. Please note all attendees are muted, so type your question into the box indicated here. All questions will be addressed during the question and answer period after Dr. Hogg's presentation has concluded. We will answer as many questions as we can in the time available. If you have any technical problems during the webinar, you can communicate with me using the questions box. I will try to help you resolve any issues that come up. There will be a short pause between myself and Dr. Hogg as the GoToWebinar technology takes a few seconds to shift between presenters. Please be patient during these transitions. This webinar is scheduled to run approximately one hour. If we run out of time and you still have questions, we will continue for another 15 minutes. And now let me introduce you to our presenter, Dr. David Hogg. Dr. Hogg is an investigative naturopathic doctor gifted at individually tailoring naturopathic therapeutics for his patients. He treats adults and children of all ages as a family practice naturopathic physician. Dr. Hogg runs a successful naturopath naturopathic clinic in San Jose, California, utilizing herbs, nature cure, homeopathy, thera therapeutic nutrition, and supplementation. Dr. Hogg is an SCNM graduate, is an example of success, guiding patients through health challenges in a natural way. Dr. Hogg, I will now turn the presentation over to you. All right. Thank you, Kiki. And I want to thank the ANMC for allowing me to present today. Um, glad to do it. Glad to be here. So, all right. Here we go. So, we're going to talk about um, how I built my uh, practice uh, with nature care medicine. So but my background is, is I graduated from uh, Southwest in 2001. Uh, I am a member of the CNDA and the AMP and I've been licensed since 2001. So why naturopathic medicine for me? I was drawn to naturopathic medicine because I always knew there was a natural solution to every disease. And when I read the philosophy at that time to apply this to the college, it was exactly how I already thought. And I chose to focus on homeopathy, clinical nutrition, herbal medicine, and hydrotherapy because to me the natural way is always superior to drugs. And the combination of these works synergistically together for every patient. So my weekly routine, 
So my research is I'm always studying cases, uh, homeopathy, herbs, uh, looking at botanical supplements, all trying to find the best thing for every patient. I do write a weekly newsletter uh, that's emailed out. And in my, in my practice, I see patients Monday through Thursday, 10 to 6. Uh, Fridays, I do not, but I am working in the office all day. Uh, I do have a B12 happy hour also from 4 to 6 every Wednesday. And I also have a monthly meetup. If anybody knows about meetup.com, uh, I have a monthly meetup where I invite people to come and uh, give a talk there. We do a question and answer. It's, it's been really great. It's a lot of fun. And for fun for me is uh, playing my guitar singing at open mics, and I love to dance. So my total hours per week is about 15 to 20 patient hours a week, but I'm pretty much 40 hours in the office every week. <clears throat> the modalities that I use, homeopathy, and I use classical remedies. And with botanical medicine, I use tinctures, singles, and formulas. Uh, also, whether it might be or bottled, already prepackaged singles and formulas as well, and then hydrotherapy. So I do constitutional hydrotherapy in my office, and I also have patients do uh, different forms of hydrotherapy in their home. And then clinical nutrition. So diet therapy, it's the foundation of my practice, and then I also uh, treat people checking their food intolerances. And then something new for my practice over the last year has been prolozon, and it's very effective for joint healing, and it's very easy to perform in the office. It's, uh, it is a very quick uh, joint pain and joint healing uh, procedure. It's quite amazing. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, so this is um, my advice to people who are opening a practice is that you mostly realize people don't understand natural medicine. They think they do, but they don't. They even might say they do, but they don't really understand it the way that we understand it while we're in school. So uh, people come to you expecting a quick fix also when they come to see you, because it's what they're used to from conventional medicine. And it's important that you have to teach them that healing takes work on their part. I was actually discussing that with a patient today. And sometimes you have only one visit to help them to, so that they can see whether natural medicine is going to be for them. Now, patient management. So what do you do when they return for their second visit? What do you do when they don't return? And how can you prevent this? This is the difference between success and failure uh, when you get into practice. So I, I do have to extend out a credit to Dr. Dixon Tong and uh, Dr. Rebecca Asmar because they helped me uh, actually come up with this. And this is a talk that I give, uh, that I go over with every patient when they come in for the first time. I talk about the Wheel of Life, uh, we discuss the cave, go over the River of Health, the steps to healing, and I talk about the weight of the world and their vitality. So when they come in, I show them this, and I also have them fill out uh, a wheel like this and where they grade each area of their life on a scale of 1 to 10. And I, when they see this, I show them to let them know that uh, I'm here to help you with all areas of your life and not just your health because your health affects every area of your life and every other area of your life affects your health. So... <clears throat> One of the things I ask them is, how do you take the dark out of the cave? And I, before I actually show them this slide, I ask them that question, and then I let them pause, and then said, well, you've got to bring in a light. And I said, that's exactly right. So therefore, um, I said, I cannot help you take the dark out of your body or the bad out of your body. I can only help you add good things in, which is the light. And this is the simplest way uh, I can explain how a naturopathic doctor helps you. So the river of health. Now, most people come in 
they've got they're polluted and they've got symptoms. So my job is to help them get back up to where everything is clean and green, which is optimal health. So what I say to them is that you started out in life with everything in your body clean and green, and as you go through life, stress, drugs, diet, lifestyle, habits, and environment push you down the river of health until you're second polluted, and then you have symptoms. So my job is to help you paddle your way back up there, and the things I give you are your oars to paddle your way back up the river. So it takes time. I'll let them know it takes time. You don't get back up to optimal health overnight. Uh, most people in working with us working together is going to take them three to five years, depending on how severe they are. Now, the steps to help. As you go up the steps, you get better. As you go down the steps, you get worse. And most doctors work on the level of signs and symptoms and disease. They give you drugs to suppress those signs and symptoms and disease, and those drugs push you down the steps. So we actually want you to go up the steps. And one of the first steps of working with me is nutritional stress. As I mentioned before about diet being the uh, uh, foundation of my practice when working with people. So, let's see. All right. So I'm helping you to go up the steps, beginning with nutritional stress. Diet is the foundation, as I mentioned, and we have many steps to work on as we work together, one step at a time, on the way to helping you achieve optimal health. And most people come in, I don't know if you can see that little guy on the left with the big arrow pushing down. So that's how most people feel when they come in. They feel overwhelmed, uh, their vitality and their resources are down, which is why they feel that way. So again, my job is to help Add vitality and resources, you know, to your body to increase your health so that over time you begin to feel like you can handle anything. So you get to feel like this guy on the right, that whatever's coming at you, you can handle it. And what I teach them is that healing takes time and healing takes work on their part. That, you know, as a doctor, you're only a facilitator. And it's important that you take no responsibility for success or failure of their treatment. And teach that the body can heal itself given the right environment. And that they have to persist with your treatment. And then you have to teach these over and over and over again. Okay, patient management. So what I teach them is that the body needs to do what it needs to do. And that the body has its own wisdom and it heals itself in its own order and priority. One of the things I'll tell patients is that do you, or ask them, it's like, do you, if I give you a B12 shot, do you get to decide where the B12 goes in your body? And they say, no. And that's where I further tell them that the body has its own wisdom about how it heals itself, how fast and in what order. Because we're not able to tell the body what to do. We can only give it what it needs and let it do the rest. So, and I truly believe that given the right environment, the body will heal itself. That healing takes work on their part. So they need to take the supplements, do the hydrotherapy, take the remedies, change their lifestyle, and change their diet. Or it's going to be hard for them to get well. It's important as a doctor that you understand that you only facilitate that you're not a healer. It's a very important concept to understand. You can only help if they follow through with your prescriptions, depending on their body. And I believe it's very important for doctors to avoid taking credit or blame. And anybody ever says, you know, uh, thank you so much for helping me. I said, well, the body's amazing when, you, when you're given the chance to heal. And I frequently, frequently tell them when they try to credit me, I say, great job. You did good. Keep up the good work. I always tell them that you got to persist, you got to be persistent. Because they tend to give up too quickly, or they fall off the diet, or you know, whatever it might be, or they stop taking something, whatever it might be. And I always ask them, how do you climb the hill? And it's one step at a time. That's how you get there. So it's important that they persist by doing all your prescriptions every single day. 
and you have to repeat your message over and over and over again. And they need to hear your teachings over and over. It's very important because it gives them security they're doing the right thing. We all need to hear a new teaching over and over again. And you will know when it sinks in for them and they get it. You'll see it. And it may take them months and it may, or it may take them years. Okay. I've actually realized I'm in the wrong file, so I'm going to quickly change my slides real quick. Start for the delay here. Okay. This one, let me get back to that. Apologies, my apologies, my apologies. So let me get back here. Okay, here we go. All right. Well, started back at the stop. Record. Okay. So uh, there's a lady who came in, she's 50 years old. She had a recurring Bartholin cyst uh, that she, every six months, she had to go into her gynecologist and, and to uh, have them lanced. Uh, and this went on for a while. I don't remember exactly how many years that went on, but. Uh, it got to the point where gynecologists were recommending surgery to remove the glands, and she wanted to see if I could help her avoid the surgery. So one of the things, one of the principles I do is, and about naturopathic philosophy is, that if you want to treat disease, treat the gut. So I ran a stool test, see what was actually going on inside her, and if you'll notice, if you can see on here, the streptomyces was way too high. That was where there were healthy bacteria. And her lactobacillus was also way too high. And then she also had an opportunistic bacteria of Morganella that was quite a bit high. So way, way, way too high. She also had H. pylori, uh, also extremely high. She had uh, you know, pretty bad you know, yeast infection in her intestines, as well as she had a parasite, which was trichorous. So we needed to deal with that you know, all one step at a time here. So this is the uh, bacterial resistance that was found. Uh, specifically, this is actually for the uh, Morganella, not the H. pylori. We pretty much know what works for H. pylori. So you can find that there were things that, uh, that I shouldn't be using, like berberine herbs, because that particular um, Morganella was resistant to that, but it was sensitive to olive leaf and cat's claw, garlic, uh, burnwood, and also black walnut. Now what I started her on, and this is what I do for any kind of uh, uh, infection, whether it's bacterial, parasite, or yeast, is uh, I use Thorne's uh, Candida diet, and I hand that out uh, to every patient for, the, for those things. I also uh, put her on probiotics, and then these different remedies are rotated in her every two weeks, and we continued this uh, for several months, for a few months. Uh, so I, there's a parasite purge formula. Uh, we used olive leaf. We used cat's claw. I did use uh, four different berberine herbs uh, and antifungal supplements as well. Uh, and we treat it, like I said, we using these alternating herbs every couple of weeks. We're continued for several months. And at the beginning uh, of each two-week cycle, every time she switched to another one, she had a Herxheimer reaction of diarrhea and mild abdominal discomfort. So basically purging out whatever was in there. Uh, and results later is that she no longer needed to have the cyst drained again. Uh, in the four years she continued treatment uh, by this office. And I have spoken to her since, and she had never needed that procedure again. So tips for practice success is that trust and believe in your naturopathic medicine. 
it's so important to do is to believe in your medicine um, so that you won't fall back on, you know, to me, on drug medicine. Because to me, that's the last step you should go to, not the first. And your mantra for yourself, I recommend, is that there is always a natural treatment. There's always a natural answer for anything that you see as a doctor that comes into your office. And patients are always looking for natural answers to their diseases. I get calls every day. They want to go natural. So be the answer they are seeking. That's my advice to you. And if you don't know how to treat something naturally, ask a doctor who does. There's lots of us naturopathic doctors have been in practice a lot, even a lot longer than I have, uh, that know how to treat just about anything that you would run into. And live your medicine. It's really important to treat your own symptoms and diseases naturally. Go natural. It's just the best way to go. So looking forward, my vision for naturopathic medicine is that we hold true to our foundation and stay away from chemical medicine. And that we follow Clyde Bernard instead of Louis Pasteur. And we no longer feel the need to fit in with nor be accepted by modern medicine. So I want to thank everybody uh, and I'm happy to welcome questions at this time. Thank you, Dr. Hogg. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to let you all know about an upcoming event we have. It's at the NAAHP Meet the Deans on June 28th at San Francisco. Um, students interested in pursuing a career in naturopathic medicine are invited to attend. And you can log in to our website at www.aanmc.org to register for the event. And we will go ahead and now open up the floor for questions. All right. Dr. Hogg, what is a parasite purge formula? Okay. Uh, I get that um, parasite purge formula from uh, Heron Botanicals. Uh, also, Herbal Vitality has one as well, and, I'm sure, and there are others as well. Um, there are several different ones available, uh, but that's, those are the ones that I use. Okay. Do you think there is value of uh, practicality for an ND offering free compassionate communication courses to all patients? Okay. Um, I'm not sure the question, uh, what that would be. Is that what, would that be the meetups that I was talking about? I'm not really sure. I guess they're wondering if offering free communication courses to the patient is beneficial. Now we can go to the next one. I am not, I'm not sure what that is. If they could maybe rephrase their question or be more specific, I don't know what that is. How many years did it take? How many years does it take for a doctor to become successful in his own practice? That is, uh, that's a big question. Uh, it depends upon the doctor, really. Um, I think that, you know, uh, sticking in natural medicine and um, it, it depends on so many things. I truly believe that everybody's looking for natural. A lot of people are. Not everybody is. Not it's natural almost not for everybody. But it takes a lot of marketing, takes a great website, uh, takes word of mouth, you know, doing good for every person every patient that comes in and helping them get well. Uh, word of mouth is is the best way and then they're more likely to refer their friends and family. So 
how long it takes also depends on I think the population of the area that you're in. If you're in a, a town of say 100,000 it'll take a short amount of time because there's not as many people. But if you're in a you know say a county area of a million or two million people it, it could take longer because of the, of the word of mouth and it also depends on your therapy. So there's a lot of depends there I know but it, it, it does depend on all those things. Okay. What gadget do you use during the Constitutional Hydro? What gadget? Well, um, my, my uh, medical assistant actually does the, the treatment itself, but it's the, uh, the Amrex is what I use for the electric stem of the Constitutional Hydro. And then I use, instead of a microwave, I use steamer, food steamers, to heat the towels, and they do it really quick. And because I'm not really fond of microwaves, uh, that's what I. And then for the cold, we use the freezer, the refrigerator, or an ice bath. Okay. How much time do you spend with patients during each visit? Uh, that depends. My first visit is about an hour. And it frequently goes over. Sometimes as long as an hour and a half, frequently an hour to hour and 15 minutes, most frequently. And then uh, follow-ups uh, depend on the patient. Um, it's I will spend as short as 20 minutes. It's hard to do everything and talk about everything in that 20-minute period. Um, most of the time it's 30 minutes. Frequently it's 40 uh, for every follow-up visit. Okay. What are your marketing tips for practitioners that are just starting out? Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I've actually mentored uh, docs when they're starting out on, on uh, especially for their website. Uh, okay, so for a website, marketing is uh, you want to have uh, somehow every city uh, mentioned, every surrounding city mentioned in your website. So when people search naturopath in their city, your website is likely to come up. You also need, a, I think, a map on there showing exactly where your office is. I think a great website showing pictures of your office is, I think, is, is a good selling point so people can see where they're going to be going. Pictures of you, good smiling, happy pictures of you. And also it's important uh, for a website to have a lot of website pointed at your website and how you get that is Google Plus page, um, Yahoo listings, um, listing on you know, yellowpages.com, um, a Facebook page, uh, there's lots of uh, search engines it's important to get on all of those uh, so that you all that way it it lifts your uh, website ranking, which really helps to start your practice off. And then also um, locally, getting out, um, if you can work with local health food stores and do some volunteer time in their stores and help people, you know, and give some free advice to people that are there, uh, you actually start to build a relationship with the people who work in that health food store. So that, and eventually they start referring you. Which is really great. That's one of the ways that I got started. And getting out in the community and doing what you love to do, what you enjoy, and meet friends, and um, people ask what you do all the time, and that will definitely help get you started. Okay. You had mentioned that you're able to treat most diseases. Does that include diseases like neurofibroma and lupus if the patient has had it for most of their life? I, I've been able to help those people quite a bit. Uh, again, diet's the foundation of everything that I do for all diseases. And, and again, people ask me all the time that, do I treat this disease, do I treat that disease? And, and it's always yes. Uh, I, I always believe I can help. No matter how severe, no matter how long somebody's been suffering, I always believe I can help. Um, we find out what exactly you know foods they need to stay away from, and sometimes that alone is is enough to 
decrease their pain or their suffering uh, quite a bit. And then, of course, we you know support that. You know, herbs I always take a homeopathic case. I always do that, and it always seems to help because it's it's not about treating diseases; it's about treating the cause of the diseases. And that's what that's the difference between you know conventional medicine and to me naturopathic medicine. It's about finding out where this came from, what caused it, and correct it, correct that cause. Either stop putting in the body what it doesn't like, start putting in what it needs, uh, basically removing the obstacles secure, um, lots of hydrotherapy, like I said, a homeopathic remedy, and that's the way I approach any, anything, no matter what the disease is. Okay. What does your office staff consist of? Do you have assistants, RNs, etc.? Uh, right now in California, we're not allowed to direct RNs yet. Um, right now, uh, currently, I have I hired a medical assistant. Um, she's also my office assistant. So right now, she's double duty. Uh, she assists me with patients. She does the hydrotherapy treatments as well as the front desk right now. Um, my plan is to, is in the coming uh, year or two, when I get busier, which I believe I will, uh, that she'll be my sole medical assistant uh, helping me, and then I'll have a different uh, front office person. Uh, that's my goal in the next year or two. Does a general naturopathic doctor make enough money to feel comfortable living in the California area? Yeah, that, I want to tell you, that, to be honest, that's a tough one. Um, started out, I would say, I would say I made enough uh, to live here because rent, uh, it's going up higher and it just goes up on me every year, rent at home, rent at the office. Um, but, you know, you, you you're here long enough. You practice long enough. Uh, it does, it does start kicking in where you can you actually do pretty well. And I would say for the last several years I've been doing well, and I'm I would say I'm doing even better now. Uh, I would say in a larger area, uh, like I'm in San Jose, it's a larger area, and to reach that, you know, um, you know that sixth degree of separation between people. As far as the word of mouth, it takes longer in a larger area than it does in a smaller area, say of a hundred thousand people. Um, so, but it's you know I don't do it. Um, I didn't start out practicing um, for the hopes of becoming successful. I started out practicing because I loved it, and I knew that eventually it would happen for me. So I think that's that's what it takes. That's to me, that's the secret of success: is loving what you do, and, and which I do. I really, you know, seeing people uh, get better has always been the thing that that makes me happy and makes me have fun with doing what I'm doing. Has the new healthcare act allowed you to see a larger spectrum of patients? I haven't quite seen that yet. Uh, we are doing a courtesy file for insurance now where uh, we copy their insurance card. They still pay up front, uh, but we do a courtesy file. So right now, I still haven't seen it this year that people are getting reimbursed um, well enough. I, I'm not sure yet. Um, uh, there, I'm sure there's some... Um, people in the CNDA that could probably could better answer that question, but I haven't quite seen it yet. Okay. Do you treat much chronic Lyme? How do you get sufficient treatment without antibiotics? Wow, that's great. Uh, I actually followed Dr. Josh Berry's treatment. Uh, he used, uh, uh, he didn't use antibiotics. Uh, his main herb, of course, he did homeopathic remedies, uh, if you want to find what his treatment was, if you go to the A and P, that's where he did a few lectures there. Uh, the A and P. Unfortunately, he's 
he passed a few years ago, he lost a great doctor, uh, but he had a really great non-treatment. His practice was in Connecticut. If you search in the A&P archives, I'm sure you can uh, find his uh, lecture there. Um, but he used homeopathy, of course, diet, everything, but his herb that he used was Dipsacus. Um, used it in drop doses, made it up from a powder in his, in his office, as I do. And um, it might, he, he even said it might take two or three years for them to get, to get well, but he's, he had said he had been having success, so that's what I started doing. Okay. Do you take insurance as payment, or are your services be free for service? Uh, it's yeah. I've answered that before. Yes, it's definitely a, a pay up front practice. Uh, we do a courtesy file for insurance purposes. Uh, we're happy to send it in form. It's you know it's free. You know, charge for that, but it is a pay up front. <clears throat> Okay, how would you treat a patient presenting a history of strokes? Would you refer them to an MD or is there another way to naturally treat them? That's going to depend upon the patient, where they're at, um, how severe the stroke was. But it would be important to me for them to be under the care of a cardiologist in addition to what I would do. How I treat them. Uh, I know that fish oil and vitamin E do really well as far as helping to keep the blood thin. Uh, it's not going to be the same as measuring their INR if they're on warfarin. Uh, my concern about, you know, warfarin or Pradoxa or any of those is that uh, oh, frequently what I've read so far is that most people don't uh, die of a stroke, they tend to die of a broken hip. Because when they broke their hip, fell and broke their hip, they bled to death. So that's that's a real concern of mine uh, and anybody who's post-stroke. So I definitely as I can. Okay. Even the dogs agree. How do you help your patients not to feel overwhelmed during their first visit? Does it help to have some patients start out solely with their treatments? It does. Um, I think the first, probably the first few years in practice, I was uh, supplementing out um, just about every patient. They would leave with like the corner of my desk full of supplements. And as I um, actually, as I began to work with uh, Dr. Dick Tom and, and uh, Rebecca Asmar, that um, I some in some cases reduced it down to one thing and sometimes that one thing is just taking one food group out of their diet sometimes the one thing is one supplement or one herb or one thing that they need to be doing before I see them the next visit and I definitely learned it's really important not to give them a lot to do because this medicine and way of treating is real different and it is real easy for them to feel overwhelmed uh, after the visit. So I always always ask them as I go over, you know, I do go over like I said what I what I do, go through the, the slide presentation that I went through with y'all. Uh, so that they understand more and they understand that they're not just here for one visit thing, that they're here actually for the long long haul. And I think that helps to calm them down so they don't feel so overwhelmed that they got to get all this all done in one visit. That healing does take time. It is going to take time to work together. Um, and like I said, not supplementing them out though they leave with a bag of supplements. I think that's really important because they really will be overwhelmed and you're more likely to not see them again. Uh, if you give them one thing, one thing to do, um, and just and I asked them, always asked them, I said, are you willing to do this? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to cut down the coffee? Are you willing to cut out the sweets? Or how much of the sweets are you willing to cut back on? Uh, are you willing to avoid meat? All of course, this all depends upon the presentation of the patient. Um, 
what are you willing to do? I always ask them, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to do this? Well, I can't cut out coffee today or whatever it might be. And I said, okay, are you willing to say pour a half a cup and then pour hot water in the rest of it or make it as half as strong as you used to? There's always, it's important to negotiate with them about uh, what they're willing to do because they can't meet you where you are today on their first visit. So it's important for you to meet them where they are and see how much they can do. That's that's what I believe helps. Okay. As a current ND student, I struggle with trying to adhere to the roots of our medicine and practicing nature care in our teaching clinics. What do you recommend for for students to do in order to remain true to the medicine while having standards of care and protocols due to insurance and other institutional restrictions? I know that's I that's got to be a challenge for students. I think it's important to do as many off-sites as you can uh, with the doctors that you want to follow. Um, I do allow uh, students to come, you know, spend a week with me uh, to do an off-site here so they can see, you know, the way I practice and the way I treat things and pick my brain all they want to about diseases and how we work with them. Uh, that's what I would recommend doing. Uh, do what you need to do where you are in the environment that you're in and do as many offsites as you can uh, and work with the doctors that you want to work with and learn the way that they practice. That's what I'd recommend. Okay. What advice would you give an adult that is entering into the field after a complete career change? Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. I started uh, at Southwest when I was 36. I was 40 when I graduated, and the advice is, if you're drawn to this, if it's what you want to do, do it. Don't hesitate. If, this, if you're drawn to it, do it. I was drawn to it uh, when I went in. I, I was motivated. I believed in it. The philosophy I knew was me, exactly me, and if you feel that way, go for it, because I believe having life experience is really important uh, to a doctor. Uh, being, having work experience, prior work experience, I think is invaluable uh, when you start out practice. Okay. Upon graduation, did you open your own clinic right away or did you work as an associate first? I, I sometimes wish I had you know, start out as an associate or or even uh, internship, or just uh, went to the went to the clinic and and hung out on shifts with docs that I you know wanted to be on. Uh, but I I was really uh, I have to say I was really fried after the board exams. My brain was was pretty fried. That I just didn't personally I just didn't do a whole lot. And then when it was when I was ready, I just ready. I was ready. For me, it was summertime, so I was just ready to get out of uh, the heat of Arizona, and uh, I was ready to get where it was cool. And I packed all my stuff up, and I just started went out and started practice. And I'm one of five in my class that did that. Uh, I just started out practicing. Uh, I stayed in contact with uh, other doctors and my mentor. I went to, of course, the went to the A&P every year and I have for years now. Um, and I'm always, even still today, um, uh, asking, you know, docs who have been in practice longer than I have, what other nature care things I can do. So I think it's important to, to do that. Do you incorporate the philosophy of yoga in your practice, such as meditation, breathing exercises, and physical postures? I don't have any like yoga classes or anything like that in my practice. Uh, I am always teaching people uh, about their posture. And I'm always teaching them about breathing. Um, I have a you know an oxygen meter and 
put it on their finger and see what their oxygen saturation is. And if it's below 97, I said, show me how you breathe. And so I'm always, always, always doing that and making sure that they're, they're belly breathing. And I had a patient a couple of weeks ago who uh, checked their blood pressure and it was high. It was like 135 over 90. And I, their oxygen saturation, though, was about 94, 93. I said, I said, why don't you sit there for a minute and breathe? So just belly breathe for a bit. And then after they uh, did that, I checked their blood pressure again, and it was normal. So I said, what do you think that tells you? I said, well, I guess I need to breathe. I said, you're right. You need to breathe. So I do that all the time, but the yoga, not so much. Um, I believe in it. I do it myself, but uh, it's not something I have in my practice all the time. How many patients do you typically see in the 15 to 20 hours per week time frame? Um, that might be, it might be 15 uh, and it might be 20. Uh, it really depends on, on the week because some people I might spend an hour, hour and a half with, uh, no matter what the procedure, whether it's a new visit, whether it's uh, you know, whether it's prolozone or, or IV ozone, um, sometimes those take time. So whatever it might be, um, it still comes out to be that, uh, be around, you know, 15 to 20 patients a week, office visits anyway, so. Okay. Do you work with other medical doctors or do other medical doctors refer patients to you? Um, I haven't had that many um, MDs. I have, uh, I've had chiropractors refer, uh, more chiropractors refer to me than, than I've had MDs. I do refer out uh, uh, to other MDs. I have an endocrinologist. I've you know, referred out to chiropractors, to uh, some acupuncturists, because we don't do acupuncture as an MD in California unless they're also an LAC. Uh, so, um, I do refer out. I also um, have, a, have a cardiologist where I send people to have an EKG if they don't have insurance. So um, I do refer out more, I think, than, than they refer back. Um, I'm thinking of this one. Uh, there was a patient I had who was, uh, came to me claiming she, was, she had asthma. I say claiming because when she, after treatment here, which was really simple, she didn't have asthma anymore. No one, she didn't need any more inhalers or any medication. And she had said that her MD uh, was going to tell everybody about me, and I sent him a letter and everything, but I, unfortunately, I didn't hear back from him, so I wish I had. Um, I truly believe that the way that we're supposed to practice is to put our is to put ourselves out of business. Um, sometimes, you know, modern medicine is not quite like that. I I like to believe that it is, um, but I believe that that's the way I practice is try to put myself out of business one patient at a time. So I teach people how to live right and um, eat right, do all the things that they need to do, and then they don't need me. That's the way I approach it. Okay, where do you see this profession in 10 years? Um, well, it seems uh, right now to be, you know, going more, uh, you know, integrative and um, there's, you know, more green, green nature paths or green allopaths, you could say. Uh, today uh, than there has been in the profession. I hope that uh, I would like to see it, you know, swing back and stay with the roots of our medicine. Um, the reason we have a naturopathic degree is because our, the doctors that came before us and our teachers were naturopaths uh, who were successful or became successful at, at treating disease naturally. So I'd really like to see it you know, go more back that direction, swing back. I would also see, like to see a naturopathic hospital. 
don't know if it happened, but I would really like to see that. Do you practice any type of acupuncture at all? Oh yeah, I talked about that. We, you know, as a naturopath, we don't, as MDs only, unless you also have a dual license as an LAC, only then can you do acupuncture in California. How do you charge in your practice? Do you charge by the hour or by, per patient? The, the first visit, I say, is about an hour, and I charge a flat fee for that, which is a little more than my hourly rate, because I typically end up going over. And then um, I charge by the hour after that. So, uh, and my office assistant, she keeps track of that time, so I don't have to. And uh, then she takes care of however much they're billed for. That that's. The, that's the way it works for me. Has the uh, Affordable Care Act had any impact on your practice? Again, I, I'm not really sure that if it has. I haven't quite seen it yet. Um, I'm looking for it, though. I'm, I'm looking to hear if people are reimbursed uh, more now. Uh, what I understand, we, I was actually one of the doctors who went to a, uh, a public forum uh, here in San Jose about how, you know, the Affordable Care Act and Cover California was going to um, impact us. We were trying to find out. And what, what I understood from the legislator that I spoke to after the, after the meeting was over was that it's going to come down to the individual insurance company and the individual plan that the patient is signed up for as to whether uh, we're paid for in network or out of network. Um, so I, I'm honestly, I'm not sure yet. This, anybody in the CMDA might be better able to uh, answer that question. Okay. You had mentioned that the way you respond to patients who don't show for the show for the second visits, visit is important. How do you handle this? So, well, how I handle that is by setting it up and doing that talk in that first visit. Uh, I spend about 15 minutes doing that, 10 or 15 minutes talking to them about that, to set up them to already know they're going to be coming back for another visit. That healing takes time. So, I, I before I did that, you know, talk and went through those slides with every patient. I wasn't sure if they were going to come back for another visit. And now I know pretty sure they're, they are going to come back for another visit. And people need regular visits. I find that the most progress that people make, and I tell every patient this, and I'll tell, tell you all that, that most progress that I've seen a patient make is the ones who come in every two weeks. That may seem like it's too close together. I, I don't know to you, but it's not to me. If people schedule it monthly, I find that it gives them a couple of weeks to go off on their own, try different things. They may read something on the internet, you know, that they say, oh, this works, so I tried this. When they come back, they got to come back in two weeks. They, it's important for them what I find is that they need to do what you told them in those two weeks because they know they're going to see you again in two weeks. It also, you know, they're less likely to fall off the diet, less likely to stop taking whatever it is that you told them to do or stop doing what you told them to do. So they're less likely, they're more likely to do everything that you recommend because they're going to see you in two weeks. That's my experience. You set it up in, in the first visit that they, that they need to come see you on a regular basis. You won't see people not show up for that second visit. Okay. This will be our last question. How did you get started with your very first few patients? Do you have any tips for someone starting out? That, I, as a, uh, I hope you remember what I addressed earlier, is that a great website. 
Uh, how I started is I created a website. That was the first thing I did, uh, and a business card. And uh, I joined the California Association to get listed on their website, and I joined the AMP to get listed on on that website as well. So, and now those are the places where I got where I received my first patient. Uh, I also began to study. Uh, you know, a little bit of SEO, search engine optimization, to learn what I needed to have on every page, how a website needed to be formed, uh, so that when people were searching, they would find me. So that's that's what I would do, like day one, when you're ready to start practice. Okay, well, I would like to thank Dr. Hogg for his time. I'd also like to thank each of you for attending this presentation. This webinar will be archived and available on the AANMC website in about a week or so. Thank you for attending. This concludes our webinar.